Hi everyone, welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Thanks for joining me for this very special episode about cotton. <laughs> Recently I've been diving down the cotton rabbit hole following a cottontail rabbit. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have been exploring uh, knitting, crocheting, and spinning with different fibers. And this is my first journey in spinning plant fiber. I've certainly crocheted with cotton quite a lot. Uh, I have a number of doilies around the house. Uh, I have washcloths, I have towels that I've woven. I've worked with cotton before in knitting, crocheting, and weaving, but I haven't worked with it in spinning. So I wanted to explore that whole process. So I did a little bit of research here on YouTube, <laughs> as well as reading uh, blog articles, uh, Ply Magazine articles, etc. Uh, but, you know, it's never the same as really getting in with your hands and doing it for yourself. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video is share with you my journey of processing cotton from the plant to yarn. <laughs> I do want to preface this video journey with the fact that I am not a spinning expert but I have been doing it for a number of years and I really like playing around with new to techniques and learning and expanding my knowledge base. So I hope that you find this video helpful if you are curious about taking a cotton journey of your own. Uh, but please understand that what I say is not the gold standard, but it is what I did and what I will probably continue to do in the future. So I hope you enjoy. This morning is a beautiful 50 degree Fahrenheit morning <laughs> to come outside and process some cotton. So I have here the cotton that my mom sent me and right as you can see it's still attached to uh, branches and things so I'm going to be picking out that these uh, pieces of the plant and the seeds and I'm going to keep the cotton for spinning so I have a big bowl here for the cotton to go into and a little bowl for the seeds and I actually did this a little while back and got some of the seeds got some of the cotton spun up a little sample and I planted the seeds. So I have my little cotton plant seedlings here <laughs> on the table to keep us company while we process cotton. <laughs> These guys are gonna go in the ground here very soon, but um, I thought they should stick around and see what we're gonna do with the cotton. This cotton was grown in a really dusty area, so this is a great job to do outside. All the tiny particles of dust are falling out of this cotton, and what little breeze there may be is helping to carry it away. So I'm doing this job outside on my back porch, uh, just so I can reduce the mess I'm making inside the house. But there's a little seed! covered in cotton because you can never get it all off the seed. Well, I can't by hand anyway. I don't know if you can tell, but the staple length of cotton is really short. <laughs> so in each of these little floofs of cotton, there's a seed in the middle. So each cotton fiber is attached to that seed. 
So they're really, really short, which is how, why folks find working with cotton super challenging. Despite that fact, I find separating the cotton from the seeds in the morning on a really cool day actually super relaxing. So this is a fun activity all in itself. I hope that you notice Marjorie, our black Labrador, sitting on the lawn. <laughs> she was outside most of the time that I was working on this cotton. So she also enjoys it when I'm sitting outside separating cotton from seeds and dust particles, getting it ready to spin. If you are also working with cotton in this way, I just want to note that this is the best time to get rid of any debris in your cotton that you don't want present when you spin. Um, some of it will fall out during carding, but a lot of it won't. So if there's a large enough particle in here that you could pick out with your hands, I would recommend that you do it in this stage here. This is the iconic cotton plant. These edges are super hard and sharp. This is why people recommend wearing gloves while picking cotton off the plant or whatnot. Um, I'm just making sure to be really cautious and careful as I work with these. And at no point did I cut myself uh, or <laughs> cut myself enough to be bleeding but I can definitely see how this could have caused a lot of injury out in the field. For those of you wondering about my sweatshirt, yes, I did attend and graduate from Northern Michigan University. <laughs> In fact, I went back there this summer uh, for a visit on my summer vacation, and wow, the campus is beautiful. I do have two piles of debris going on the table here. One with the really large pieces that you can see on the left. They're those really hard, sharp edges. And then closer to my hands is a pile of really little debris that also looks like it has cotton in it. And it's because it does. Um, just a heads up, if you're thinking you'll be able to pick out all the debris and save all of the cotton, um, that's unrealistic. <laughs> you will lose some of the cotton in this process, but it's such a small amount. It's really not a big deal. It will save you a lot of headaches later in your spinning if you pick out the pieces now.
I said this is so nice to do outside in the cooler weather. Uh, yeah, this was a really active day in our neighborhood. My husband was using the saw. Uh, one of our neighbors was getting their roof redone. And the other two neighbors were having their lawn mowed in this moment. And it was ridiculous. Well, after that noisy day outside and temperatures getting warmer outside, I came up with a method for me to clean the cotton inside the house without making too much of a mess. <laughs> so I have this box here, uh, which is actually the box my mom sent me the cotton in. So I've got dirty cotton in the corner there that I'm picking from. In the opposite corner is where I'm putting the debris I'm picking out of it and you can see the container I'm putting the seeds in off to the side there inside the box still so all the so-called dirty components are still in the box and then the clean cotton is going off in the bowl to the side so I'm sitting on the couch taking up a good portion of the couch to get this job done, but at least I'm not outside in the noise or the hot weather. As you're probably guessing, this part of the process takes quite a while. Uh, in fact, I'd say this part takes the most time other than actually growing the plant, which I have yet to do. <laughs> uh, but if you're wanting to take this cotton journey for yourself, uh, plan on this part taking the most time. You might be wondering what I do with all of that debris from the cotton. And the answer is, nothing goes to waste here in the Dehart house. So I'm taking all of this cotton debris and putting it in the compost pile. This will break down and feed my garden next year, which will hopefully include cotton. After picking the fibers away from the seeds and plant material, I am going to comb the fibers using my carters. So I'm using my hand carters here that I ordered from Howard Brush Company. They are not specifically designed for cotton. They're not cotton carters. They're the same carters I use for wool. I feel like they're a decent tool for this job and I didn't to order new ones, so that's what I'm using. In fact, the way that I'm carding this cotton fiber is super similar to the way that I card wool. And here I'm rolling off the cotton using two straight knitting needles in place of dowels uh, and pulling the fibers through the tines just to help really comb them out and roll up these tiny little roll legs called punies. So I'm rolling these pretty tightly, uh, especially since cotton fiber is so short in length that I didn't want these to be super loose and airy. I wanted them to be 
tight, small, and neat. So what I'm doing is grabbing a big handful of cotton and I just fill up one of the carters. Um, I'm trying to shove it into the tines here, but really I'm just packing it up with a lot of fiber. And I take my other carter and I pass it over top, um, just trying to spread out the fibers between the two uh, carters. And then once it gets difficult to do that, I start working it from the bottom edge to the top edge to load all the fiber onto one carter. Then I switch and I do the same thing with the other carter, working from bottom edge to top edge. This is the same way that I card wool fiber, so I'm just applying the same technique. So you're going to see all the cotton loaded onto close to the bottom edge of that carter, kind of the bottom half. So here's the last pass that I will do. Notice I'm kind of going back and forth, spreading out the fibers, but I'm going from that bottom edge upward. So this fiber gets three passes on the carters before I start to roll it off. You can see it looks really clean, fluffy, the fibers are pretty aligned right now. And then I'm going to use my two straight knitting needles like dowels and roll, pull and roll this fiber off of here. Out of this batch of cotton, I think I created about a hundred punies this way. So this also took a bit of time, but not as much time as actually uh, separating the fibers away from the plant material. Besides, I could do this while watching TV. Now on to the best part, spinning. Oh. <laughs> uh, my spinning wheel is an Ashford traditional. I bought this used at a flea market a number of years ago. Uh, I haven't had to do really any improvements on this wheel since I bought it, just regular maintenance and upkeep. She's a good wheel and I love her. The biggest piece of advice I picked up in my research before going on this journey for myself was that cotton requires a lot of twist. Because the fibers are so short, they require a lot of twist to keep the yarn held together. So I don't know if you can tell, but I am treadling this wheel pretty quickly. I'm showing you this in regular speed. It's not a fast forward, I promise. <laughs> but I'm putting a lot of twist into this uh, yarn. A lot more than I would put if I were spinning wool. Each of those punies that I rolled up, before I actually sit down to spin, I actually pre-draft each of those ponies. So here you can see I'm just pre-drafting this out to make spinning these fibers a lot easier. 
um, the way that I spin and the way that I hold the fiber, if I don't pre-draft like this, it will get all bunched up in my hand and be this hot, sweaty mess at the end. So pre-drafting just makes it a lot easier. Once I'm done pre-drafting, I'll go ahead and add that section onto the yarn. It's a real quick, easy join. I haven't really had any issues with the cotton joints. And I'm off and spinning. I noticed during this process that I think I'm more of a fan of back drafting than forward drafting. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. Do what's comfortable and go with the flow. I decided to create a two-ply yarn. So here I'm plying the two plies together in the counterclockwise direction. So I spun each of these singles in the clockwise direction, which is Z twist, and now I'm plying counterclockwise in S twist. So I have my lazy cane on the floor. I'm keeping a finger in between each strand to make sure they don't um, get twisted, have curly cues, um, any issues like that before they go into the uh, orifice. And this is the fastest part of spinning in my opinion. <laughs> There's no drafting to deal with, it's super quick. Here is the finished cotton yarn, and I do have it in two skeins. Uh, the only reason is because of the size of the bobbins on my Ashford Traditional. Um, each of these skeins uh, filled up a bobbin. <laughs> so um, here's the first one that I applied. So you can see I spun the singles in the clockwise direction and I applied it counterclockwise. I made a two-ply yarn. This skein has 166 yards in 37 grams. And it looks like a beautiful fingering weight yarn. And then this skein is really close. Uh, in 39 grams, I have 156 yards. So this skein is a little heavier and has 10 fewer yards, uh, but they're really close. It's not a perfect spin, but in hand spun, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, there's a little bit of thick and thin, um, lots of twist, not a lot of twist. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful worked up. So to finish the yarn, after taking the yarn off the bobbins, I did boil them in soapy water. So I added a little bit of dish soap, uh, not necessarily a name brand dish soap. <laughs> <laughs> I put a little squirt of dish soap in a pot of water. I put the skein in the water and brought all of it to a boil. And I left it boiling for five minutes. 
and that's how I finished these skeins. And by finishing, I mean setting the twist, right? Um, so that's how I set the twist. I uh, put it in boiling water. Well, I put it in water and raised it to a boiling temperature. And then I uh, put these outside to air dry. And uh, in this warm southern, summer weather, <laughs> things air dry pretty quickly, so that was nice. Um, but yeah, I have finished creating the yarn, so the next stage will be figuring out what I'm going to make out of it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful, enjoyable, if not a little bit entertaining. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope that you do. Just click the button right down there somewhere on the screen or down below. <laughs> uh, stick around to see what I do with this cotton yarn. I think it will be fun. Bye.